Hey, this is Math 6, Unit 3, Lesson 2, Anchoring Units of Measurement. Um, this lesson today is going to be pretty short. Um, really, that's because the idea is that what we want you doing is playing with some different shapes and measurements and experimenting with things just so you get a real good feel of different types of measurements that are out there. So in this first activity, it says estimate the volume of the tiny salt shake. And we've talked about volume before. So volume is going to be that space inside of that, that cube there. So depending on how big that might be, you can see it's like a thumb length, right? So a thumb, how long is a thumb? You know, is that like an inch by an inch by an inch? So is that one cubic inch maybe? Again, it's just, it's hard to tell, but it's just something to estimate to think about what that space inside of that uh, shape, uh, that salt shaker is going to be. Okay, and so in the second activity that you may be in class today is called cutting some string, and it says your teacher gives you different lengths, either one centimeter, one foot, one inch, a meter, or a yard, and then you're supposed to estimate and cut a piece of string as close to your assigned length as you can without using a measurement tool. So this is something you can do at home or on your own. Just get out some string and see if you can, without using any rulers or measurement tools, see if you can cut a piece that's about a centimeter and a foot and an inch. The idea of this is really just to kind of get in your head the idea of how long that is. So you can kind of visually see how long is a centimeter. It's something about that long there. How long is a foot? Well, this page is 11 inches um, tall, eight and a half by 11. So it's a little more than the length of this page here, right? When it comes to an inch, an inch is more than a centimeter, it's more like that space there. Maybe that's about an inch. A meter, and take some more more, um, more string there to get that meter going. We have meter sticks, and you also have yard sticks. We know that meters are connected with centimeters, and that for every 100 centimeters, we actually have one meter. And then we know that yards are connected with feet, and that there are three feet inside of one yard. We also know that, of course, an inch is inside of a foot, and that 12 inches is inside of one foot. So, you know, using that, it's good to just have an idea of how long these different lengths are as you're estimating things in the real world. Okay? And so in activity three, you had a card sort activity with just some different, um, different measurement types and different kind of things to measure uh, and pictures. And so you had to just have a conversation about whether um, that object was something you would use to measure with a length or a volume um, or a, a weight measurement there, right, for how heavy something might be, weight or mass. And those are the three things you're looking at there. So let me just kind of skip to the summary real quick and then we'll get on with the uh, homework part there. So really we can use everyday objects to estimate standard units of measurement. So it's kind of some ideas. So for lengths, you know, what might you think about? If someone was talking about a millimeter, we would compare that to the thickness of a dime. That's about what a millimeter is, right? About the thickness of even my pen, pencil mark here. A centimeter is about the width of a pinky. And I always tell my students, just look your pinky, and that's about one centimeter, just straight across that way there. An inch, from the tip of your thumb to your first knuckle, so you could use that as an inch. Um, that works. I would always tell my kids that's a centimeter and then two fingers width is about an inch. So you have a centimeter and an inch there. A foot is the length of a football or it's about the length of your foot. <laughs> that's why it's called a foot there. And a yard is the length of a baseball bat. So if you think about a baseball bat, you know, that would be the length of a baseball bat. Cool. A meter is the length of a baseball bat and ball, right? So it's a little bit more. It's the ball, bat and the ball. So a meter is more than a yard. Kilometer is about how far you walk in 10 minutes. And a mile is how far you can run in 10 minutes. So it takes you, it's a little different there. So a kilometer, you can walk it in 10 meter, minutes. And a mile, you can run it in 10 minutes. Although to pass our PE testing at our school, you probably want to go a little faster in 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, volume. Milliliter, milliliter is about the volume of a raindrop. So we're talking really small there cup is like your school milk carton. A quart is a large sports drink bottle. So when you have a big Gatorade bottle or a Powerade bottle, that's about a quart. Okay. A liter is a reusable water bottle. So if you know you have your hydro flask, whatever you have at your school, that would be your well, might be about a liter. And a gallon is like a milk jug. And then finally when it comes to weight, 
A gram is about the mass of a raisin. We have lots of raisins where we live here in California, in the Central Valley. We make lots of them. If you eat raisins out there, wherever you're from, they're probably from our place. So a gram is about the weight, uh, mass of a raisin. An ounce is like bread. And you think about, you know, I like to eat raisin bread. You know, it's always yummy, but raisins are inside that bread. So those are grams. So an ounce is going to be bigger than the, way more than a gram. A pound might be the whole loaf of bread. Right? So we have our whole pound of bread there. And a kilogram is the mass of a textbook. So your book, maybe not the one you have right here. These are paperback books, but a regular book might be a textbook with a kilogram. And a ton is the weight of a small car. So we use tons for larger objects there. So that was the idea of today's lesson. Okay, so let's take a pause there and then we'll look at tonight's homework. Okay, so it says to select the unit from the list that you would use to measure each object. And so we have this list right here and we have a whole bunch of units to the side right here that you can use and there are multiple answers the idea is just to be able to rationalize why you'd use what you use so length of a pencil you might use centimeters or you might use inches for the length of a pencil both work fine if i'm talking about the weight or the mass of a pencil i would probably use grams but i could also use ounces right it wouldn't be much of an ounce it might may, might be one but i don't even think it's one to be less grams would be the best one there probably for the volume of a pencil, um, I guess we could use um, millimeters because it's solid. So we could use millimeters for the volume of a pencil, that space there. The weight or mass of hippopotamus, I might use pounds. I might use kilograms. I could maybe even use a ton because a hippo is pretty big. Um, for the length of hippopotamus, again, I might use feet, I could use yards, I could use meters, those would all be okay. The length of fingernail clipping, that's gonna be smaller, that'd probably be a millimeter, probably for how long that's gonna be. Um, I mean, I might use a centimeter, but probably that might be a better choice. The weight or mass of fingernail clipping, that's pretty small, so I would probably go with gram, kinda like that raisin thing. The volume of a sink, we would talk about volume of sink maybe in terms of gallons, maybe in terms of liters, right? Maybe a quart, possibly, you know, but a sink's a little bit bigger, so gallons, liters, probably best. For a bowl, I probably would go with a cup. If it's a big bowl, maybe a quart, but probably more like a cup. I could use a liter, but again, that's a pretty big bowl. Length of a chalkboard or whiteboard, again, probably feet or maybe meters. The weight or mass of a chalkboard whiteboard, again, probably I would go with pounds or kilograms. And the length of the border between the United States and Canada, we would go with a longer unit of measurement, like miles or kilometers. Those would all be okay. Again, these are just some ideas of what you might use there. Okay. When this little pet hamster is placed on a digital scale, the scale reads 1.5. So there's a little pet hamster sitting inside of a hand. Now that hamster looks a little bit like um, a mouse, but I don't really know. I guess it's a hamster. Hard to say. I, I don't know. I don't have one. So what could the units be if it's 1.5? Because we're talking about weight, we have some options. We could talk about it in terms of gram. So we could talk about it in terms of ounces. We could talk in terms of pounds. Those would all work out just fine. Okay, now a pound is, is much heavier, so I would probably not use a pound that's probably too big. So the question would be would I use a gram or an ounce? Remember, a gram, gram we say was about the weight of a raisin, where an ounce was talking about a slice of bread. So when you think about this, and this is like the whole loaf of bread, right? When you think about the little the pet hamster, the little small guy there, we would probably say it's probably bigger than a raisin, it's smaller than a loaf of bread. So maybe we would go with the ounces for slice of bread. That's why it's good to have these ideas in your head when you're talking about um, how heavy or how long or how big something might be. All right, number three. Circle the larger unit of measure, then determine if it measures distance, volume, or weight. All right, so I have a meter and a kilometer. Kilo means thousand. So this is one, and this is the thousand of the same thing. 
So I'm going to go with the kilometer being bigger than a meter. And because of what it is, this actually would measure distance. Here we have a yard and we have a foot. And we know that it takes three of these to make one of those. <laughs> so this is going to be the larger one. And again, that measures distance. A cup and a quart. All right, so if you think back, maybe you remember this from other learning. If you have a cup and I have another cup, I actually end up with what we call a pint. But then if I take four of those together, I actually end up then end up with a quart. So the quart is the larger one than that. And that's going to measure, because it's a liquid, it's going to measure volume. I have a pound or an ounce. We talked about that loaf of bread, right? That's the pound. And one slice of bread is there. So we're going to go with a pound. There are actually 16 ounces inside of one pound. And that's going to be a weight. So we would write weight right here. I have a liter or a milliliter. Okay. So that milli means it's going to be like a, a you know a thousandth of it or whatever. So the liter is larger. This is like the raindrop, right? Or the raindrop one. Whoop. And this is like your giant water bottle. So that's a drop of water. It's a terrible drop of water. That's okay. So this is larger, and that's going to be a volume. And then finally, we have a gram or a kilogram. And the gram was the uh, raisin. And a kilo, like kilometer, is a thousand raisins. We're going to go with a kilogram being bigger. And that's going to be a weight as well. Number four, some review questions from unit two. Elena mixes five cups of apple juice with two cups sparkling water to make a sparkling apple juice. For party, she wants to make 35 cups of sparkling apple juice. So how much should she use? OK, so we have our apple juice and we have our sparkling water. All right, we know that it takes five of those and two of those in order to make some, uh, the special juice. Now that's going to give me a total of seven cups all together, right? Total. What we learned before is that I can take that same total and if I use the right multiplier, if I multiply by, in this case here, I want to get the 35, I multiply by five, that would tell me I'm going to, I'm going to make five batches in order to, to get 35 total cups of sparkling apple juice. So I'm going to take that same multiplier. I'm going to do 2 times 5 is 10, and 5 times 5 is 25. And that's the amount of apple juice and sparkling water I would need to make 35 total cups of sparkling apple juice. All right, number five. Lynn bought three hats for $22.50. At this rate, how many hats could she buy with $60? And if you get stuck, use a table. All right, so let's use a table. Here's our hats, here's our money, and here's how this works. We have three hats, and the three hats cost her $22.50. We know that she has $60 to work with here, right? So I have to get to a point where I can get to 60. That's my kind of goal, is to figure out how I get to 60 from what's given to me right there. All right, so here we go. So 2250, hmm, let's see if we can figure this out. If I take the 2250 and I go, well, how much is that for three hats? How much is one hat? Okay, one hat in our case here is times one third. And if I do one third, of 2250, 3 goes into 2250, goes in there 7 times for 21, subtract, we have 15, goes in there decimal 5, so 750 is what I end up with for, um, for 1 hat. Now 750 is a nice number because when I multiply that by 2, I get 15. Multiply by 2, I get 15. I like 15 because I know that 15 times 4 is going to be 60. So now I can take this number and multiply it by 4 to tell me that I can actually get 8 hats for $60. All right? Is there a different way to go about that? There probably is. That's just one way of going about it, but that's how I did it. Okay. So this table here I wrote out, <laughs> just now looking at my notes, forgetting that there is one in your book, but that's okay. Number six, our last one today, it says light travels at 180 million kilometers in 10 minutes. That's exciting. So um, we know that for our speed, we have 180 million kilometers. 
and it does that in 10 minutes. That's our minutes, that's the kilometers. How far does it travel in one minute? So that's 10, we're gonna drop that down to one, which means multiply by one tenth, multiply by one tenth, so that becomes 18. So we would say 18 million kilometers. So 18 million is like this, and there's kilometers, and we're set to go. That's it. Have a great day, and we will see you next time for hopefully a little more work than we did this time.